a playlist original. Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. We'll tear your soul apart. Live or die. What you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young, but had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster with your hosts, Gaius and Jackson. Another episode in our Tales of Horror series. I think it's our second to last one now. I think you're right. Uh, which yeah, is kind of... Kind of sad. We're winding <laughs> down. It's been a really great time. I mean, it's not over yet, but uh, no, it's been a fantastic time. And what better series to get into this late in the game with Halloween and an entry that uh, uh, I guess has, for its own reasons, a lot of um, fans and people maybe not so much on the side. I thought it was an interesting first time watch, so I'm excited to get into it today. Yeah, yeah. So our last two. You're right. Uh, uh, are both going to be Halloween movies? Uh, yeah. so that's fitting, and they both have big anniversaries uh, this year too, which is also very fitting. Um, but to help us discuss uh, this particular film, uh, which is going to be Halloween Four: The Return of Michael Myers, which turned 35 years old on October 21st, uh, is a close personal friend of mine from like middle school. So this is like a back in the day friend. So this is uh, the David. David, we've this is the David. Yeah, 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 I've heard good yeah, things. Yeah. I didn't make that connection <laughs> until now, but uh, yeah. nice to have you on. Is it your? Is it? Your first time on the show. This is my second. What did second? we talk about last time? Was it? I know we did, you did uh, last time. Or? Uh, we did like Scream Two. Oh, Scream Two. Yeah. Okay, before yeah, my yeah. time. I, that was before. That was right before your time, Jackson. That was like maybe okay. like a couple of. I think it was like a couple of weeks before you had your guest spot, and then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I very well may yes. have listened to that episode. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it's very possible. There's several of us on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot. I I think Mark Mark was on that one, so he knows like Mark mm, J. Parker. Of uh, course. Course, right up his alley. Uh, <laughs> staple. He would have um, hung out with me and Gaius for sure. Like yeah, if we he went to school together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would have been our, <laughs> our friend for sure. Um uh David has to doesn't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna just read what the movie's about real quick and then kind of get uh his uh initial uh kind of when he first kind of discovered it, and then we can kind of go into a few things uh sure. with that. Um, so Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, uh, released on October 21st, 1988, directed by Dwight H. Little and written by Alan B. McElroy, stars Donald Pleasant, L.A. Cornell, and Danielle Harris in her film debut. In the film, awakening from a 10-year coma, Michael Myers returns to Haddonfield, Illinois, to kill his seven-year-old niece, Jamie Lloyd, with Dr. Loomis pursuing him 
once again. Um, despite negative reviews from critics, it has uh, gone on become uh, had to gain a cult following. Um, it made seventeen point eight million dollars on a five million dollar budget and was the number one movie in America for two weeks in a row when it came out. Um, also, a big deal following Halloween three season of the witch because that was a mm. Michael Myers less uh, sequel. Um, much to the detriment which, of uh, <laughs> series fans, I understand. Yeah, which was very, which very upset. How this movie um, eventually yeah, came, came to, to be. be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but David, uh, when did you uh, first discover Halloween? Well, 4? it was for sure with you, and you had yeah, told me yeah. about yeah. it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Gay is I his his movie collection already is legendary, and it was legendary when we were in middle school. So like he had all the he had all of them on VHS. And so when we were watching them, we just watched them all together. And this one I loved so much. So, yeah, I don't know. What was it? 97, 96, 97. So, yeah, that would be yeah. around the time that we were really getting into horror, too, because it was like the mm -hmm. scream. I know you did last summer stuff was going on. So then we were watching like old horror movies as well. And, and we would uh, have sleepovers. We would just watch yeah, all this stuff. Movies. We would never go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> never go to bed. Yeah, those were the no best sleep. growing up. Just oh, yeah. the horror yeah. movies. Me, Cam and I would do that as well. There was like no sleep at all whatsoever. And I agree with uh, this one was always a favorite of mine growing up. I it's my if we're going original timeline, I, it's my favorite sequel of the bunch. Um, it, it's nowhere near 1978. I will, I will, I will get that out of the way. Nothing it's does. Not, it's no, yeah. it, nothing comes close. Nothing but comes as far close. as but as far as like a lot of the sequels that came after that, I think this one does a good job of kind of bringing you back into that world a bit. Um, it doesn't have the benefit of having Jamie Lee Curtis for the first time or, you know, you have Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis. That's your one familiar, like, you know, human character that you can kind of latch on to. But everything else is new. So they have to kind of create something that is compelling for you to want to watch and uh, root for. And I think they did a good job with Jamie Lloyd, both writing wise and Daniel Harris just being, a pretty dynamo actress that young at the time that uh, she's pretty Wicked good in the child movie. performance. She was fantastic. And uh, also special shout out to Ellie Cornell who plays Rachel, who is also, I mean, she has, she's the uh, kind of unsung hero of this movie because she goes above and beyond uh, to help her, um, her foster sister. And um, I don't know. It has some really good, it has some really fun set pieces. And I mean, I, some probably some of my favorite set pieces from the franchise and, I think it's just fun. I yeah, it doesn't have to be nearly as good as 78. It just needs to hold up as a decent sequel, and that's what I think it does uh well. And I think it still does that 35 years later. Cause I I've I had this one 4K for a while and I hadn't watched it yet. And that's how I watched it for this. Nice. And it looks it looks great, it sounds great. It's still uh still my favorite sequel of the original bunch. So, and that just for clarification, what is that original timeline considering? So that's Halloween one, two, four. Is there anything after that? And Halloween, Halloween one, two, four, five, six. Okay, so, that's, so yeah. five is what revenge or revenge, revenge, revenge. and yes. then curse is six. Curse is six. Okay, for sure. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, and then when they did H two O, they were like, "No, nah, we'll just concentrate on one, two. H2O. Right. Lori's back. She's no longer. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Cause she got, and then, Yeah. And then David Gordon Green's is they all don't exist except for right. one. Just one. Yeah. <laughs> so, they turned into a rumor. <laughs> yeah. 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 They're just like, uh, yeah, they yeah. did. Like they, they mentioned that in, uh, the 2018 movie. Um, but David, I just wanted to ask you like other, like, uh, what is it about it that kind of stands out for the you? The opening montage sequel? alone is such a vibe like i it, mm. i want that to be a screensaver like especially you say you have the 4k of that oh man I, yeah, I yeah. would love to just like rip that and turn it into like an apple tv screensaver that just one that, that rotates those montage. images yeah exactly yeah yeah i thought well, the yeah, same thing it starts very different from the other two so that makes it like it's not the traditional like halloween movie opening that we're used to uh and i actually like it's like it's got like an eerie like vibe to it I, and I think it feels very fall, very all the traditional, like kind of like all Hallows Eve kind of images that they yes. show is like really cool. Yeah, agreed. And they wanted to, if I recall correctly, when we went to that Halloween convention five years ago now, um, yeah. they uh, they talked about wanting to bring it back to the idea of the harvest and the season, then, as opposed right. to just opening it as a as a murder 
<laughs> slasher yeah, but film. yeah slasher film yeah which i think works i mean because like it's i guess that is the best way to kind of I agree i think if it would have if you would have made this today if there was like one two and then like you know some rotten stepchild in between if they would have made that today it would have been easy just to be like oh yes let's open it like we've opened the first two you know the whole like kind of pumpkin with the theme like mm -hmm. everything that people know i don't right. think they would have tried i don't think they would have tried this today because uh it really doesn't have that feel of a halloween movie the way it opens other than the title card you knowing what it is from that but Mm -hmm. But I think that's what makes it stand out from, and to be, and I know we're not talking about Hall Halloween five has a great opening too, in that sense where it's not a traditional Halloween opening, uh, cause it's, it's cutting back and forth between like the closing moments of part four. And then like the whole, like carving of the pumpkin that rapidly, really fast. Like, I know I, they both, these two movies have really good openings that are different from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so I think the rest that of like Danielle Harris does like, the Jenna Ortega thing. She's just acting circles around everybody in this movie. Everybody else. <laughs> yes. So, it's like insane. Like the bedroom scene, her screaming every time, you know, she's turns around, opens the door. There's Michael again. And he's pulling her from under the bed. And Man. then just that closet scene where she's just completely tortured and Rachel goes to hold her. It's just like, I don't know, man, there's something about that performance. that's kind of wild to see. Um, yeah. Yeah, kudos to the casting director. They found a great child actress in Danielle Harris. I think there's something even before you see her act, there's something like just so naturally vulnerable about just her face. Like as a young girl, she just has that look of like a vulnerable person. Yeah. And then obviously we knowing the nuances of her character, like having this really traumatic family history and knowing what is to come. I think it's just her her likeness really encapsulates that. And that I think was like a talent of the casting director and and finding her yeah and i, I agree I, yeah go ahead no no go ahead i no, so i just think also like she was the least polished of the girls that auditioned melissa joan hart auditioned for this uh sabrina the teenage witch and uh okay i think danielle harris had like a soap opera credit other than i mean that was like what she had at the time and they really thought that like you said she had like an innocence about her that can conveyed well on screen and it it really does actually i mean like you have to want to uh root for her and root for her safety and i really think you do throughout yeah, the entire everybody movie. that does her wrong i hate immediately like yeah in the school, like, <laughs> yes. oh, them kids like yeah just for them to kind of flip and be really nice to her outside when they actually do go trick-or-treating it was kind of wholesome I'm like oh okay now they sort of welcome her but they i, I agree with, like when they're in the school like chanting at her about her uncle being the boogeyman and her parents being dead it's like yeah you just want to like slap all those kids <laughs> Yeah. And I think um, in addition to the set pieces, Gaius, like the trifecta of like what makes this movie work again comes to the end. And you've teased it on the you've talked about it on the show that like some fans want maybe a continuation from four. And what would happen if Jamie did become evil like they right purport at the end of this film? And Do they, they abort that? going forward I, no spoilers but okay uh, they don't do it i mean i i don't want to ruin it for you um it's only 35 I mean, years old but. it's only 35 years old yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah like it's at this point it's my fault i don't imagine i'm gonna they get have, around to those this year uh the in corporate speak they have some opportunities to 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 make up for that okay choice that they made I see. yeah um so anyway but as a as a standalone film absolutely like just great story it, it, it of of course it would have happened that way and it and it's really interesting so mm -hmm. yeah and by the way it starts the whole concept which i know like i mean i i think jackson is, is gonna finally watch halloween ends for this spooky season yeah, that's right yes. uh, um Planning but it, it really this movie really starts that whole concept of the whole like transfer of evil like you know like this mm. isn't like this isn't a man right this is what has kind of been established even in the first one like John Carpenter talked about how like the, he's the embodiment of evil. That's kind of what he envisioned right. Michael Myers as. And I think with the sequels, you know, they've had to explain like, oh, but he's also her brother. And like, oh, like, and mm. this is also her uncle and like all that stuff. But at the essence of it, it's he's pure evil. And that whole thing with Jamie and what ends up happening at the end is just, you know, that concept's been there since like 1988, apparently. Mm -hmm. And like it, it's not. It wasn't a new thing that kind of came up with these latest movies. It's always been this idea of like maybe hit that person's evil is bigger than just like the man itself, right? And it can be passed on to someone else, which I think is an interesting concept. And that's a concept that 
John Carpenter. Uh, that's why he liked ends because he was like, that's kind of what I was hinting at you know, I, for a little bit. I think <laughs> you and I talked about it privately, but ends reminds me a lot of Christine and everything I yeah, liked about ends was like, I was like, it's Christine. It's terrific. Yeah, it is. Yeah, nice. it's, it's, it's not Christine terrific, but it's year. terrific. Yeah, that might make that might movie. make Jackson actually like in because you per, perhaps it, even if it's not the entire movie. If there's if if what I think you're hinting at happens in like the finale of Halloween ends, I think I can appreciate what I'm anticipating. Um, even though I'm not like expecting to love the movie like thoroughly, um, I think I like that comparison to Christine. And I can I imagine I think where you're going with that. Just thinking of the last shot of Christine, and I really really love that Carpenter movie. Got my second watch of it in a few weeks ago just to kick off spooky season. Um, but I got to say I was floored by the ending of Halloween Four for all its you know imperfections throughout. And that being said, I still am leaning positively towards this movie. Um, it's not yeah. perfect. There's some things I had to I wanted to get to, um, but I thought it was a dynamite ending. I I I love a cynical ending where not everything works out, and yeah. you know it's sort of a, a bad ending, if you will. Um, and that last frame and the sh and the sounds of Donald Pleasance like screaming and like anguish about not still yeah, being no, able to yeah. defeat Michael. Like I thought that ending was fantastic. I thought it would have been a great series closer, but. Of course, <laughs> not how things are. No, of course, I no, like that a, as a trilogy one, enough, two, and four. I think that is fantastic. Yeah, it made enough money where it was like, oh well, and yeah. then it had that ending. And I think they, I think they were kind of like, well, what do we do? I don't mm. think you know. I think when they made, I don't know if when they made Halloween four that they were thinking like what they would do next. I think it was kind of like, hey, we don't even know if this is going to work. Maybe because Halloween three <laughs> left a lot a bad taste in people's mouths. Are yes. they going to? Except the fact that Michael Myers is back following how he clearly should have died. I mean, also Dr. Loomis should have clearly died mm -hmm. in that explosion in Halloween 2. Absolutely. Uh, which is glad I'm glad, which I'm glad you got to watch Halloween 2 because like I think you would have been like, oh, like how did they right? You know, it's yeah. clear that you know I'm something happened in that too. second movie. Um, there's no way either one of them should have that that explosion is massive in Halloween <laughs> 2. I mean, if Michael Myers can survive it, I suppose, but Dr. Loomis certainly shouldn't have survived no, that i but. at least i like that they at least went through efforts like the makeup department to account for his relatively Burns minor that. injuries yeah um and i get you know he is a great component of halloween 4 and something that bridges the gap between them and it would have been a while since michael's last appearance so it's nice to have the character yeah. in there but definitely would be okay with his demise at the end of two it would have been satisfying but glad to see him back uh it's not like it, that's the last time the halloween series you know uh <laughs> gambles with characters fates like that so i guess it's not exactly out of the blue um yeah yeah no it's always nice to see donald pleasance in in the series and, and was that his last performance in the how no, does he come he, back he, he's in five and six he was really oh my goodness he passed away before six came out oh, okay um but apparently he was pretty not in the best health on part four. Dwight Little, who directed it, talked about that on the Blu-ray, that he wasn't in the best health, but he was game to be there. I think they said that at this point he had accepted that, like, this was, like, his franchise. Like, he was, like, yeah, you know, and he was okay with it. And he, you know, it gave him a, a later, the later half of his life, a, a career, and he was happy with that. And everyone that worked with him on part four from, like, like Daniel Harris and Ellie Cornell, everyone said that he was great to work with. He wasn't like kind of like this like snooty like British actor. He was very he was happy to be there, and right. he he really enjoyed uh, doing the movies. He, it wasn't like he uh, phoned it in, which He's I a thought pillar was of the clear. series without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. he really is. And, and and like you said, that stuff at the end is pretty. Uh, it, that ending works because of him mostly yeah it's the, image, it's the imagery it's the imagery of her of her of course but like that it's lingers, the complete, yeah like shock that he you know he that he thinks this over and then he sees that and it's just <laughs> it's starting all over again through someone very that's tragic so young. Yes. yeah yeah like you see um, innocence it's, corrupted again he's experienced it again after having the rug pulled out from under him and thinking that evil's been defeated i something very poetic yeah. about that ending uh, i also think what just something that to piggyback off what you'd mentioned uh, a few moments ago, I think what really worked in this movie and why the ending uh, is so satisfying is I'm guessing the approach to this movie was just taking it one at a time, not necessarily knowing what was going to happen after the release of this movie and just putting all the creative effort into one movie without wondering what's going to come down what's the road. Because yeah. it's been a long time since I think a Halloween movie's had an approach like that. 
Uh, and I think it really, really worked in the case of Halloween four. So just, yeah, That's just okay. a lesson to be learned. Yep. And um, I got someone else joining us real quick. I just want to pop them in. Yeah. Cause they just welcome, welcome Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> what is up everybody? How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, How are you? Good, good. Uh, take a little moment to uh, introduce yourself and uh, uh, your pockets. Yeah, I am Jeff from the Sons and Shadows podcast. We cover canceled and forgotten sci-fi and horror television shows. We also talk about some nice. cult films on our YouTube channel. So we got a little mix of everything fun. Nice. Well, thank you for joining us uh, to talk Halloween 4. We started uh, a bit because um, one of the guys has to go uh, a little earlier before the rest of us. But um I'm glad you can join us like handshake handoff. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's gonna be like, hey, and I like tap you, like you tap out, he taps yeah, exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, there we go. Um, yeah, we were just kind of talking like some of the key points for David, so he can get some points in before he uh, had to go. Sure. Um, but David, was there anything else that you wanted to? Uh, I mention? Uh, I don't have a ranking of the masks, but I think I hate this. No. Mask. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they, yeah. <laughs> an unfortunate yeah. part, definitely. Yeah. From um, the get go, from the onset, it's like yeah. as soon as you see, and, him and it's in also the like he's all shoulders and no neck. I don't yeah, know. it's like it's all so like weird. this. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a like, weird vibe. It it looks good in the dark. Like there's that one scene after he like after he uh, impales the chick with the shotgun. Uh, mm. It's like that one shot where it looks okay because it's like in the dark yeah. and you can't really see how bad it looks. Um, yeah, but yeah, other than that, that it's I don't know how things that. went awry with the. <laughs> mask in this especially because the poster it's all it, it's the poster is the original mask like it, you, you've seen that post before it's like it's this a is what... still from two i think is the poster for this uh, one like, i read it's like ridiculous. i think for, for all intents and purposes the mask is like as close to the same but it comes down to like how it fits the actor's head it's again it's a third person portraying michael myers different shaped head mask is going to fit differently uh but tiny I, eye this holes, is man. one of the ones that looks holes. the worst it's definitely not as bad i don't think as h2o and some uh, of the ones we see in there, um, but oh, it's yeah. among the worst for the sure. Halloween five, two to choose from. Halloween yeah. five is awful too. The one after this is not oh, great. Not it's good. worse than this one, yeah. I think it's worse than this one, yeah. Yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. Like it's, you just uh, that is the core part that you have to get right, and to, to have that <laughs> so mishandled is very unfortunate. Um, a couple uh, other notes that I wrote here. There's only a few people in my life that I can text double scoops to and they'll know even what i'm referencing oh, i don't know why nice. that line stuck out to me as a kid. <laughs> that's fun <laughs> it's just a really funny that's all she wants all she wants like double scoops yeah, yeah double, double scoops, scoops. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, let's see uh oh so michael's middle name it came up in a meme recently and then there's a great shot of the of the fill out of the form here in this yeah. movie his middle name is starts with an m but I've also heard that his middle name is Audrey. Audrey, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? I've never heard any mention of a Michael Myers yeah. middle name before. Obviously, nobody yeah. has ever cared except for the fans, because it, it, this came up <laughs> right. in a discussion I saw in some group the other day. But I didn't know uh, if anybody had to say about no, that. No, I, I don't know. Just because there's a great prominent shot Where's of Michael I've, M. I, Myers. It does, does say, does, it, does say, it does say Michael M. Myers. I forget where you hear Audrey from. Is it in this? I don't know. I figured if anybody knew, Gaius would know, but maybe Jeff Man, knows. I'm about to look this up. <laughs> I'm a little Jeff. fuzzy on that lore oh, in particular. Okay. It just reminds me of like how old WWF days, Kane the Undertaker, and after a month, they dropped the first name Kane, and he just was the Undertaker, and nobody <laughs> talks about that huh. ever again. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> um, and the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, drugstore is the same Vincent's drugstore from The Sandlot. Uh, oh no way oh trivia. yeah hey, look yeah. at that yeah because they're both shot in utah <laughs> okay neat so that's my uh that's that my if you're watching the movie with me those are the things i'm gonna point out to you <laughs> by the way it is the the whole middle name thing is listed as a goof on imdb okay mm. uh, about it, it they said that michael's full name is michael audrey myers at in the mental hospital when someone is typing his name on a form uh they write myers michael m instead of audrey I'm just trying to figure out where the Audrey thing is. Hmm. Is it in Halloween too? It's got to be. In... 
If it was, I didn't notice it today. But then again, like I was. Or is it? Or is it? Or is it in the television version of Halloween Two or the television version of Halloween? Because like those are different as well. (laughs) Yeah. Once Jackson gets caught up on all the movies, then we got to show him the producer's cut of six and the (laughs) TV cut of two, the TV cut of two, and the TV (laughs) cut of one because they added scenes for that. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. That's hilarious. And each of those loosely ties into future sequels, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So it depends on which flowchart you're following. The flowchart for this series is absolutely the most convoluted of any series I have ever experienced. And I think that is adds a charm to the series and how you approach watching it on subsequent viewings. But I still don't have my like bona fide watch order down pat. Obviously, still a couple I have yet to knock off the list, but I consider two and four essential viewing for sure. Now, after having seen them, I, I both like them and this is hot off the heels of H2O, which I wasn't, you know, massively a fan of. So it's nice to, you know, enjoy a Halloween experience again, at least ones that I haven't seen before quote unquote, because a lot of four came back to me, Jeff, I was saying, I uh, just came off my watch of four, but uh, I, a lot of it was coming back to me upon that watch that I'd seen growing up, like on the cable channels and whatnot. Um, so a lot of scenes came back to me, but had been, I don't think I'd seen it, you know, start to finish before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Same with two. Right. My first uh, watch of two in today. The middle name of Audrey was revealed in the novelization of, uh, of <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, actually, uh, I, it was nice. in the book version. <laughs> I would have never known that at all. I just actually like... pushes up glasses. <laughs> is it Good. the expanded yeah. universe or is it yeah. the non canonized expanded yeah. universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so bad. Uh, who would know that? I mean, yeah, it, yeah, that's very first revealed. I have Audrey, the novelizations, but... by the way, so I should oh, know. Oh, this, you should. It's been so you should so know. long since I've read them. Well, <laughs> I will. I I appreciate you guys letting me come and play. I will leave you to it, and I'm very excited to hear the rest of the episode. Oh, right, for sure, man! You Thank you for coming on for coming Thanks for joining us, David. We'll have to get you on for a full length episode sometime. Yeah, that'd be tight. For sure. Later, David. All right. Thanks, guys. Later, nice to meet you, Jeff. Yeah. All right, Jeff. What was your uh, your first? Uh, exposure to halloween for like when did you see it and what did you think of it and what do you think of it today this is probably the most roundabout story but it was college i watched part six and i went back and thought there's four and five of these (laughs) i only thought there was like the first three i honestly completely whiffed on there being a fourth and a fifth one and after like it came out the producers cut and they were running the halloween marathon on like amc back then because they would play yeah. like one, two, and they just keep on rolling. This is where I'd seen four, I believe, is in an AMC yeah. marathon because I was glued to that as a kid. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. And and that's kind of how I got onto that. And then I heard like, hey, this is a little bit edited. And this is about the time I was really getting into like physical media collecting. So I went and I got like all the VHS tapes. I went to like my local Suncoast video, I think it was, or FYE, whatever it was back then. And no, it was probably Sam Goody, but I bought them all and I watched them all the way through. And I'm like, these are pretty dope. And I really like part four. And I know I came in at the end of the mask conversation, but (laughs) never put the fake mask on the cover and have a different mask in the movie. Yeah, that's initially what will kill people. And then you go to part five and the mask is even worse. It's like worse. But yeah, part four, that's my uh, origin on that. Yeah, part four. I have the poster in my, on my wall in the back. Yes, I've there. seen uh, it in there before. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, it looks great. I, it's a good poster. I, I, I love part four. I think when we went to the convention five years ago, I think most of the autographs and stuff I got signed were from people that were in part four. And oh, that's nice. like my, that's my favorite. Uh, other than like I did like Nick Castle and PJ Souls from like the first movie, but like yeah. part four is my favorite. Like I mentioned earlier when David was on of the like original run of sequels. And uh, but I do agree with you that image uh, on you know the VHS tape, the poster, it gives you that impression that you're gonna get that original like William Shatner uh, mm. Halloween mask, and what we get is not that. Um, doesn't kill the movie though. I mean, no, like, he's no, still, I agree. He's still imposing, and like, it, I mean, like this is like you know in the late '80s, so this is when like you know people like Jason Voorhees were all about like brute strength and strong. Like this is a much stronger Michael Myers than, you know, the first two movies. I actually wanted to know what you thought about that. Jackson having, you know, you had just watched Halloween two, And then of course you know one. So yes, I think it's a difference in the characterization of him. I more so than ever today, I've started like, and I'm, I haven't necessarily heard this comparison made, although I wouldn't be surprised if I'm the 
not the first to bring this up, but like it's abundantly clear that Michael Myers is not by any means a fast sort of killer. He has this very daunting, slow approach. Slow. Right, <laughs> and uh, although like his brute strength, I would say absolutely noticeably stronger in this, and which I think is still in line with his character. It's not necessarily that different. Like he has some 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 feats of strength in the first two, but I start looking at him more as like a snake curled up that like kind of waits for his victims to lunge when they're close, and a guy that sort of tracks you down, even though he does follow his victims. It's he's more like lying in wait, and I think that's what is sort of uh, scary about his characters. You never know when you're entering a room, is he already in there waiting for you? Is he behind the curtain behind the door? That's how most of his victims seem to meet their end. Um, so in that yeah. scene, he's like a something that lies in the darkness, which I guess I had not necessarily like thought of it that way before. Just I look at him as like this character with this gate that's like always yeah. chasing his victims. It's not necessarily the case after seeing these two. Um, yeah. And I liked, I still thought his character was like, you know, done consistent throughout he's uh i think to see michael run i think would be just too overpowered <laughs> and would just there would be no chance so it's a good thing that he's a slow walker although in h2o i think he develops teleportation but that's a whole other conversation <laughs> i know we talked about that when we covered and he learned how to drive across country yeah. without cash yeah, yeah without cat yeah he's a man of many talents that michael Myers. i think he might i think he might technically teleport in halloween kills too because i don't know how he killed judy greer at the yeah, end of the that's, house. That's right. He just There's has that. a way of getting in places. He should be like a, a spy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Talented man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I think that uh I mean, as far as depictions of him throughout the movies, this isn't my favorite, but it's not my least favorite either. Yeah, I'd like, say I think, somewhere I think in the middle. Middle, yeah, yeah. There's I think no George P. Wilbur criticism. George P. Wilbur played him in this, uh, the late George P. Wilbur. He played him in this and in Halloween Six. Uh, the way he plays him in this is definitely better to me than the way he kind of lumbers around in Part Six. Oh, uh, I agree. Like, uh, I don't but, really yeah. want to watch Part Five and Six from what I hear of these movies. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Are there like, we, okay. uh, is it, are well, we were trying. Watches? We were trying not to like ruin the at least part five for you because the way that part four ends uh, and i but, have part five on dvd so there's a chance i'll get around so, to it uh, yeah yeah but i, I don't mean, really care you know what i mean like if you spoil yeah, it these movies go. are old i'm sure i've read trivia and gone through the pages on indb over the years i'm just i forget quite easily with movies yeah. i haven't seen so you know well, no worries i guess i guess for the sake of jeff we'll go back to the beginning just a little bit it's, it's sure here, uh, what are your thoughts on we we talked about the opening title sequence now different it is from uh, the first two movies uh, and how we thought uh, it really stood out for this movie. I just wanted to know what you thought of it as well. I loved it. It really captures the sense of like Halloween and fall and like ruralness and being away from like major cities. We don't need to go to Manhattan. There's my jab. <laughs> and you know, I just, I love the melody. I love the music. I like how it brings you back to what, Halloween is as a franchise as opposed to the third one, which I love that one to hell on high water, but I know it does not fit any narrative between part two and four, and mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah. But this this emphatically tells you, welcome back to Halloween. Get ready for a body count. Right. And yeah, it I agree. And it delivers. I yeah, I kind of wish I would have you know been around during that little period of you know, you get Halloween three and that's not what people want. And then this mm. comes out in 88 and it's, and it's 10 years after the release of the original Halloween. So there's that whole kind of like anniversary, like return yeah. to form uh, kind of thing. I know Mustafa Akat, he was like, yeah, we let John Carpenter and his team do what they wanted with the third one and try the whole like anthology series, you know, Halloween movie. And that just didn't work. Because mm -hmm. people were confused, they were like, uh, "We spent Where's two Michael? movies with Michael Myers." <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. going on? I mean, they doubled down on that. There's a there's they show a TV spot like at the at a bar in Halloween Three. It's on TV, so they yeah. they they are making it clear that like Halloween like one and two are not a part of like this Halloween Three that we're doing. This is not in that universe like whatsoever. So they double down on the whole like let's disconnect from uh, what mm -hmm. it was and. Uh, I think Mustafa Akkad also kind of saw that, like, hey, like, you have Friday the 13th with Jason, you have A Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy, like, you know, this guy is the face of our franchise, and we should mm -hmm. bring him back and just kind of go back to basics and yeah, see how that goes. Um, and I think it mostly works. I know, I know that um, 
you said that you had some issues with it, Jackson, that but overall it was yeah, overall good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and, and like the issues with the movie are not necessarily like issues that it's hard to I don't even know if issues really right. We're more just like um little nitpicks, like there's like some just very it's like how you consider like it's very much an 80s feeling movie in some ways and that's not necessarily a detriment i don't want to paint the picture that like it takes away anything from my experience but like it does fundamentally feel like a movie of its time even more so than just being a sequel to halloween like i felt even though halloween 2 came out in 81 it still feels like a leftover 70s feeling movie and feels like very much you throw that in yeah they may have come out three years in between each other but it feels like it could have come out in tandem with the first Halloween, as far as, you know, the cinematography, how the movie feels like all the characters are back. The, the age difference isn't significance. It still very much feels like it's just the direct sequel. It may as well have come out the next week. Um, but this one feels like a rem, yeah. like a remnant of the late eighties. It has some of those tropes in there, which just because I noticed them doesn't mean that it's a bad thing necessarily. But like, for instance, like just some of the dialogue is very eighties feeling and sort of like cements it in that, time period where i feel like the 70s version of the, the first original halloween is timeless um yeah for instance in some ways yeah. um like some of the delivery like in the early like, when they are going to transfer michael first of all i thought it just kind of <laughs> hilarious and i know the movie needs a plot we need to get michael back but like why is a a 10 year comatose patient being transferred in the first place like let <laughs> sleeping dogs lie like why are we doing this like just do in, they feel I mean? that like something might happen because it's 10 years almost on halloween night like is that why they're transferring him make sure you're right man. you're right which just <laughs> you invites, are right though it, yeah it's a very loose like kind of way to like oh we got to get him out of the you know, yeah a way for we, him to escape yes we get our in the first few minutes we get that security guard at uh the insane asylum sort of giving the exposition (laughs) yeah retelling the story giving us in like his five minutes a little spiel of you know the the mythos of michael to the people that are transferring him which just feels very much like an 80s trope catching us up to speed and you know it's still done in a graceful way i think but it was just it was funny to see um yeah um what else do i i had a couple points here to mention um, not so much like criticisms. There really weren't many. Um, although I was curious what you guys thought about how I didn't, if there was any um, mention of it, I missed it. But like how Jamie was like aware of who her uncle was at her age before, like never obviously having met him. She's having nightmares of him at the beginning. Clearly knows who that he this, is. Yeah. But I was just curious about if that, if any other movies touched on that, if there's anything between no, the lines so- that was missing. So Jeff, I don't know if you can kind of clean. I mean, it seemed they don't really mention how she's aware of who he is in this movie. We just kind of she is clearly aware of who her mom is because she has a picture of her. Right. She's a picture of Lori, and I'm just assuming that she might have just heard murmurs of who her uncle was based on who her mom was. And mm-hmm. but that's just an assumption. They don't really mention it at all in the movie that about why she would know who he is and why she would be having nightmares about. I see him. Um, yeah, Jeff, presents you itself think? is like common knowledge because like the her fellow school students just tease her. Oh, know about it too, like, boogeyman. I well, suppose. if you get taunted about that, you're gonna ask, you know, your your guardians, your parents, your your big sister, like, why do they mm-hmm. keep saying boogeyman at me? Well, unfortunately, you gotta tell her then what's going yeah. on because if she doesn't know what's going on, it's just gonna like totally mm-hmm. wreck her childhood. And so it, the movie presents it like everybody knows she's his nephew. And she should know that as well. So I don't feel like they insult the audience too terribly much with that, but they don't outright say like, I see she knows they know, you know, right. Let's just get on with the story. Let's not dawdle too much on this. Mm -hmm. What I do think is interesting though, and they don't really write it. I do. There seems to be like this sense at the start of the movie for her, that she is dreaming about him and all that, that she almost senses like something's coming. And that's just me reading in between the lines. Right. But that's that's not something that's explicitly written. But like the way she is, kind of having nightmares about him and uh, all that, it seems like you know, it like they don't really write it, but it seems like there's a lot going around this whole like it's been ten years since this thing happened, right? And yeah. almost like this is like it's awakened this kind of beast a bit, I guess. That's another way. Yeah, to it's put a bit it, of like but... a psychic sort of like connection, like some sort of familial connection between everybody, right? Um, they were clearly setting something up for the fifth one, which probably promptly got shifted into doing 
something else in the fifth else. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I can skirt around like what happens in that for Jackson so he can watch that without knowing what's going on. But basically the fifth one is the resolution to this one. Okay. But the problem is, is some of the things they set up in this, they don't follow through with in the fifth one, especially okay. with some key characters and the whole psychic thing. It does come to some sort of fruition, but it, probably just ends somewhere in the middle of that movie and it never okay. comes back again never comes back well again. it would yeah. probably bother me oh uh, you were you were really good at explaining that without telling him because i didn't okay. know how to like do that without giving anything away um, i love these movies you know. once you get rob mm -hmm. zombie i turn out so okay so this is another <laughs> reason i'm a rob zombie halloween apologist save for two first one i like the first one me of the second okay. one uh-uh <laughs> Fair enough. I've, I've warmed. Confused. I've warmed to the first one. I mean, I know yeah. I've made comments about the second one, but like I, like I've Deserted told Jackson you. before, like when they announced that remake, I was like, oh no, I don't want to see it. And then when I saw it, I just instantly hated everything about it. Like I hated every frame of it. And then yeah, like I'll now I'm that. like, now I'm like, yeah, I still don't love the first hour, which just feels like a leftover Rob Zombie movie. But like right. the last True. thirty minutes, which is, which is like a Cliff Notes remake of the original movie yep. has its moment mm -hmm. has its moments i just don't yeah. like i don't like i don't love the characters that much i, I mean even laurie's is not likable in those movies mm -hmm. and she should be uh i always mentioned danielle harris to jackson i thought it was cool that they cast her in uh rob yeah. zombies halloween as a nod to the fans because like you know because of halloween 4 and halloween 5 she became like a big fan favorite like she yeah a lot of people she is listed as like a, a lot of people's final girls even though she is a young girl in this movie but she mm -hmm. more than holds her own against the adults in yeah. the film like i think she yeah. does a incredible job for how young she was at the Agreed. time and you know and you know you're, you're coming off of you know you're coming off the whole jamie lee curtis laurie stroh thing so like it's you and know you had that and you know how do you fill that in and i think it probably helps that uh jamie lee curtis in halloween 2 there's not much of a character there because she's mostly comatose yeah. and in the hospital the mm -hmm. most of the movie so you're you're really going off that you you're going off that first movie. So you have that second one in between where Laurie's not like particularly like a strong character in right. Halloween too. So she gets to kind of come in fresh and present something new. And I and there's something to be said about like a child being in danger. I think that adds a lot to mm -hmm. uh, why Halloween Four works. It's now that you mentioned and bring up Jamie Lee Curtis, is something I had a question for both of you guys, whoever wants to take the reins, or maybe you guys know differently. Um, but I was curious. I know, obviously, it's so secret, and they actually take the time to address what happens to Lori in this movie. But obviously, it would have come down to, I'm sure, Jamie Lee Curtis not wanting to be involved post-Halloween 2. But do we know what – is there any more context to that? Is it just as simple as she wasn't interested? Was she doing other projects? Is there drama behind the scenes? Like – Anybody have any insight to that? Because I'm completely oblivious. So I would think by this time she's already done with horror movies, right? She's already yes. done like tr she's already done Trading Places. I think had, had a fish called Wanda come out by this point too, because that was a big that was hit. eighty nine. Uh, I, I, so like, but she was already done with horror movies. I mean, like yeah. I mentioned, I mentioned this to you before, but like you know, she, like she did Halloween and she was like it did really well and it was critically acclaimed and she thought she was going to get a bunch of movies and mm -hmm. then she didn't. And she was doing TV, and then John Carpenter was like, "Well, hey, I got this part in the Fog. Do you want to do that?" Right. And then she was in the Fog, and then after the Fog, she did like Prom Night, Terror Train, Halloween Two, all in a row. Right. And and I think she to avoid being typecast. Yes. She just didn't want to do horror movies anymore, and she definitely. I mean, I don't even think they even bothered to ask her. <laughs> really. To do to do this, I mean, I can't imagine they did. I mean, I, if they did, she might have been like, no, <laughs> I'm not interested. I believe they went through the motion of, are you interested? Yes or no? And she said, no. And no. so they're like, cool, we're just asking. Because yeah. John Carpenter has been on record saying, yeah, they've asked me to come back every time, but I am I just say, no, I'm not interested. So it, it's kind of like yeah. the formality. If you don't ask, on the off chance that one of them was going to say yes, right? Then, shit, I got to change my script. <laughs> fair enough yeah, yeah. And, and this is the first like, one with no carpenter involvement i read as well yeah so like he he uh, uh carpenter and deborah hill signed over the rights to yeah. mustafa akkad after uh halloween three so he had the rights but they always but but the to, like to jeff's credit 
they do always in some capacity with almost every sequel would go back and ask if he'd be interested in doing something right. like coming back and writing something so it wasn't like a kind of like rotten deal with the rights i think john carpenter was like done with it he right. even want to he didn't even want to do halloween 2 like no. he said hollow he said halloween 2 was a struggle and i right. have to get through so like you know he was proud i think happy to let it go and just make whatever little money he right. would make off of it no, right. um but Mustafa Akkad knew that it could be a moneymaker and he wanted it. Um, I think it's interesting that the original idea they have for Halloween 4, they, one of the writers that came up with an idea was that Halloween was banned in Haddonfield. And they said, that, I think the basic idea was that if you try to suppress something, it would only rear its head more strongly by the very attempt of trying to erase the memory of Michael Myers. The teenagers were going to ironically bring him back into existence. That was the original um, idea that they had for the fourth one. And Masafa caught threw that out and said, "No, we just gotta keep it simple, <laughs> and just, no, and, hey. just and keep it simple and built like this whole like kind of familial connection between Jamie mm -hmm. and uh, and Lori, which you know Jamie Lloyd was. They did pay a nod to Jamie Lee Curtis. She is named after Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie yeah. Lloyd. So that was that great nod. Um, so like they they were like the the connections need to be simple, and I actually agree with, with them on that. Like even though that is an interesting idea to have the the whole die idea if you try to." ban something like would it kind of still you wouldn't be able to suppress it because it's so powerful or whatever but it, i don't think it needs to be that deep for mm -hmm. a fourth movie <laughs> a third movie technically with michael it would have been like but... michael it would have been like halloween meets footloose <laughs> 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 oh my god that's hilarious <laughs> and then um alan b. Bacon. And uh, Alan B. McElroy wrote this script pretty fast because he had to get it done before the eleven days. I uh, writer, yeah. the writer strike of nineteen. Yeah, so yeah. this was well impressive for what the time constraint he was, you know, forced to abide by. That's uh, I think he came up with a solid screenplay. Yeah, I think it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty, and it moves pretty fast. It's a really short by, yep. by the numbers movie. Absolutely. Um, um, what did you think? Because uh, I know you you like your kills. Uh, the first big one is the the thumb through the head and the. When they're transferring, yeah, uh, Jackson, Jackson loves Jackson loves his kills. Yes, I like, I like my gore. I like to see the the on screen <laughs> action. Um, that being said, this movie uh, it's not gory though. It's it's not gory. <laughs> it uh, doesn't deliver on every kill, which is unfortunate. But no, we do get more certainly in the first and the second. Actually, was imp like it, it upped the blood factor. Oh, the nice. second one is a the second one is a basically. Uh, a rotten stomach a stepped out of like the Friday the 13th. They're like, hey, yeah. like that movie was extra gory and to the point where John Carpenter, I get went around like went like after Rick Rosenthal was like, hey, I want to make it more like yours, which is like more suspenseful, less gory. Mm -hmm. John John Carpenter knew what was selling at that point, and it was more gore, right? And ha on Halloween too, that like, there's a lot of, and I don't think that movie's not really gory. There's just more kind of deaths in it, and more deaths, yeah. Crazy. You see more more aftermath. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the nurse whose blood has been drained out of her arm, and then what's his face slips in it, and like you get the yeah. overhead shot of the floor, I mean, and it's all over the place. Like that was pretty nice. Halloween oh, two was my nice. favorite. The the girl, the, the I think her, I forgot the girl, the nurse's name, the blonde that gets a scalpel in the back, and he just like lifts her up. Yeah, you don't see uh, anything that, there, though. Like, but that's such a great. It is a good uh, kill. Go and her shoes just fall to the ground. It's, yeah, it's so that was pretty. Sauna nice. kills pretty dope in that one, in my opinion. Yeah, the face peeling back from the scalding water that it was nice. And I like that. So, and that's so funny because that's what so many people hated about the second one. Because the first one is like all suspense, all atmosphere. And then when yeah. that came out, they were like, This is basically like every at that point, like slasher movie that was coming out at that point. Like, right. It's just gory and mindless, I guess. For well, sure. it also like it. fits with like the alien franchise. Alien, the first one, is way more suspenseful than the action packed oh, horror. Yeah, yeah. aliens, yeah, aliens. certainly. So. Um, agreed. Yeah, like you get a shot of that ambulance just back to four for a moment. Uh, we as they mentioned, there's four people in the ambulance with Michael. We see one of them yeah. get any sort of damage. I don't even necessarily see him. Ah, do we see him die? I know obviously he does, but we get, you know, we get a thumb in the face, which is nice. And then we get that after shot of Dr. Loomis, like wading through the water, going into it. And the thing is an absolute massacre. So stuff like that. Yeah. Me more and more. I would have liked to have seen that go down. I know that it would have been, <laughs> you know, there's its own problems associated with filming it and whatnot and maybe budgetary wise, but um, it did leave me wanting, leave me wanting more a little bit with some of the kills that being said, like we do, we are treated to a lot certainly more than in the first we get a, a couple good looks at some of them too like i think um 
Brady getting impaled by the shotgun is a good one. I had remembered that too. I knew that was coming a mile away, having just seen it growing up and was once I knew what was going to happen to him, I was like, Oh, this is, it's, it was a lot of fun. Just random parts of the movie coming back to me as I was watching it. So that was cool. Also, I knew I recognized him from somewhere. And of course he plays Dawn and um, Daisy and oh, he's a, he's a Confused. Yeah. yeah. Halfway through the movie. I was like, I knew him from that. And then he also, he's a Buffy alumni too. Oh yeah. On the, yeah. the movie, right? The movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, was it the movie? Oh. Okay. I just saw, Buffy I think ours is a TV show. Ours is a TV show. Oh, it might be the movie. Oh, I don't know. Sasha Jensen. Well, I'm having a look here right now. I do not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sasha Jensen, who played Brady, he is 1992 Grueler. Yeah. It would, be, the, it would the, be the movie. It would yeah. be the movie. Yeah. I see. Yeah. With okay. Christy Swanson. Yeah. So he's not a character in the, in the show at all, eh? No, no, no. Okay. But still, I mean, the movie has its fans too. It's a cool. Yeah. It's cool. What about what about what about you? I know you're a diehard. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a TV. I'm more the TV show than oh, okay. the movie. I think okay. movie's fun, but it works better as a TV show. Yeah, I didn't even know it had a movie, so I saw Buffy and I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's in the show. I wonder, Gay is supposed to be a fan of it. But um, <laughs> uh, he's good in the movie. I liked his character. Yeah, I was like wondering what you thought about the characters outside of Jamie. I mean, I guess Rachel is like the next big, other than Loomis. Uh, Loomis Rachel of course is awesome. Um, yeah, I thought Rachel was a great stand-in for for um, Jamie Lee Curtis or for Lori rather. Um, I mean, I think again, like Lori also, it, of course, is an amazing part of the first and a reason why I like it so much. She's again, she's not utilized like incredibly in the second one, um, but then I didn't really feel like she was missing in this one. I really didn't have any issue. I was happy to see just a different familial connection with Michael and him just trying to eliminate. The family yeah. in the in the form of his niece that was fine with me um although brady wasn't necessarily likable and he's playing two girls at one time i thought he yeah. was you know he, he, but was he sacrifices fine. himself yeah him. exactly redeems himself <laughs> a bit. he redeems himself if that, i see I mean, a group of my daughter i'll kill you oh yeah the <laughs> yeah, sheriff yeah. the sheriff and then her and then uh god i'm blanking on his girl the the blonde hair girl's name. Um, yeah, so was I. Um, Kathleen. Her real name is Kathleen Kinmont. I met her in person. I don't know why. Kelly. I know her real name. Oh, you met Kelly. her. Real okay, yeah. yeah uh, uh, Kelly. Yeah. Her 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 long T shirt that just, just says "Cops Do It" by the book. <laughs> that was like, awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. like I mean, just like just a stereotypical like eighties. I'm not gonna call her slutty because I don't think she's that. Well, I, she's she's definitely the fun one. Of yeah, the, no, for sure. Of the she two does. girls of of Rachel and her, and she's the fun one. Yes. And, uh, that line she has that she gives to Rachel too. She goes, "You better wise up to what men want." Or what Rachel? Rachel yeah, the yeah. only man you lose yeah, to yeah. another woman. Oh, like, and Jesus. I'm like, you know, so she's got a, like a point. <laughs> the and then she goes to dump some coffee on her. I'm like, yeah, yeah she like, has to oh, her own house like? too. <laughs> I know. And by the way, the coffee must have not been that hot because she didn't like yeah. scream or anything. Or it was care. just like no. uh, a care. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A nice little brawl would have been. And I'm assuming those they were in high school. Or, that seemed right. like late high school. Yeah, yeah. And like they were, and that they had that kind of dialogue exchange with each other, like as probably so, like maybe juniors or seniors. It's just yeah. hilarious. I mean, yeah, that it that soap opera got so deep <laughs> between all of them. Um, I love under impending death. Kelly is still wearing no pants. Throughout no pants. Movie, yeah, right. It is interesting too because, like, I would assume. I mean, I'm not a girl. I mean, if my dad came home, like he's a sheriff, I would like, you know, have thrown some pants on by at, at that point. Sweats. Like, <laughs> at least sweat. I mean, Brady had the sensibility to get all dressed up again after they yep. return home. So you'd think that it would have gone a yeah. long way, but I don't know. Maybe it's her house. Maybe that's just a thing in the Meeker household. Yeah. <laughs> pants are optional. Uh, you mentioned that um, because with Halloween 1 and 2, you mentioned that with Halloween 2, you like the look because it still feels like it could have been released after halloween like right a week later um the look at this film i mean what, what do you think that they did their best to capture like what a halloween film could look like? because this one was shot in like salt lake city so it's not shot where the first two were so there's definitely different locations a different right a different haddonfield mm -hmm. but like what did you think about it like overall for this movie um short answer yeah i thought the cin cinematography was done very much it was reminiscent of the first two, but I've been yapping a little bit. So Jeff, if you wanted to answer that too, I'll definitely chime in. But in short, absolutely. I did think it looked a lot like the first two, like just cinematography wise, but Jeff, what did you think about like how this movie looks compared to the other two? I can't really compare to three. I haven't seen season of the witch, but it's on my list. Yeah. It, it does feel like it fits within the universe of 
you know, Haddonfield and the town. So they replicated everything very well. They did good location work. They mm -hmm. did, did like very good shooting. They had some great camera angles at times too that kept it felt kind of fresh like mm -hmm. the first one did. So it felt like there was enough going on to make you feel like you're back in Haddonfield. And a lot of that was on, like you said, the cinematography, art direction, set design. Yes. Everything came together in one good pie. It's like, hey, you can only bottle that lightning so much. And for what they could do, and the couple of things that I thought were missing, they got at least Haddonfield down. If yeah. only they could have gotten in the shot of the Myers house from L.A., even just mm. for one second and showed like this place is like destroyed. Still like it's still plot. there. Like that would have went a long yeah. way. You're right. Because we don't we don't get a shot of the Myers house in part four. We do get one Correct. in five and it, and it looks yes. way different. It's like it it's way they is even try to like a cathedral. In LA? It looks like no, it's that that one Halloween five is also shot in Salt Lake City. Yeah. But they didn't even try to like get a nice replica of what the house looked like in the first no. two movies. It it looks way different. It it's looks like, like some big mansion. Castle. It's like four <laughs> stories <laughs> tall. Yeah, it looks so. It's not even close to what the house looked like. Don't let that um, detract so, you. It it leads right. to good tense moments and okay. and things that happen there. But at the same time, if you're trying to compare it to the first one. You're yeah. going from like this little trailer park home up to like this big mansion going, whoa, what the hell is I know this? we keep we keep bitching Halloween five because like much like Halloween one to two, Halloween four and five do feel very like connected as one yeah. movie almost. Okay, nice. Um but Halloween five has two really great scenes that okay. I can think of on the top of my head. Like really good suspenseful scenes, and then, then the rest yeah. of it's mm, Hey, hey, it's, it's, a movie. It's, a movie. it's a movie it's a movie, it's a movie. <laughs> yeah. uh, i just, just to bookend your question there to taper it off like um i think that was one of the the shooting and like how this movie looks visually i think was one of the reasons that really brought me back uh especially yeah. comparing it to h2o which uh, so i again just to recap i've seen i saw two and four today and two like i mentioned looks just like one as far as i'm concerned but yeah having watched H2O like a few weeks ago, like I thought obviously different setting that movie takes place in California. It's way brighter. Even the scenes at night on campus, I thought just looked too bright. The shadow work and the dark scenes and settings. And as you mentioned, Jeff, like the uh, art direction, particularly in like the Meeker household, like all the scenes yes. yeah. there, like that is very much like traditional Halloween cinematography to me. And like, just had me feeling like back in the driver's seat of that franchise and really appreciated that. And a lot of movie does, <clears throat> take place at night too which is just great i mean right. halloween scenes i just feel much more natural when the story is taking place at night um, yes. but haddonfield looked great in the daytime too um i didn't really care much until we got to haddonfield about like for the look of the film but once we're there it felt like home um yeah, this is a point earlier just a, a again not a criticism but just one of those very 80s cliches um that i had took me out a little bit in the earlier scenes is uh the gas station when um <laughs> no. <laughs> bursts out in the truck and then of course it's not enough to turn the fly by loomis he's gotta you know clip the gas uh like <laughs> the, the, the explosion big 80s cheesy dramatic explosion and that was probably most of their five million dollars i was gonna say they're <laughs> wetting half the budget right there yeah, exactly. <laughs> right that one scene and like, clearly not donald pleasant's doing that jump that was a stunt man i would uh, yeah. <laughs> when i lose uh, his cane after too he's like walking hitchhiking on the highway and again like just for like i i found myself just wondering what the the purpose was of like the, the whole cheerleader car pulling up and just taking off right in his face. And then just for this random, like reverend, I get the conversation that he has with the guy that does eventually pick him up is, yeah, you know, the conversation. Some missed something. Yeah. 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 But odd. Yeah. I do think the cheerleader thing is weird. It's, it's a weird insert to like, yeah. Kind of make fun of him, insult him. It, I suppose it's not, it's not funny either. So it's like, there's no, yeah, I agree with I that. I just found myself, this is very like eighties inserted. Yeah, useless sort of scene, but um, I guess at the I time. always, I always love. There was one time I, when I was watching this movie with my friend, and it's like there, there's this all this dialogue about how the phones are down, like and you know the power has gone out, mm. and then my friend all of a sudden was like, "Wait, homie killed dude at the power plant to like to just knock all the light." It was that his intention? <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I guess." I was like, I "We don't really." So. They, there's a big like kind of gap on like how and in, how intelligent he is. I guess so, like mm. you know he he went there to like. 
to disable all the power and, right. and, like, Commun- further communications. and communications. But right. like, it was just funny how it came to my friend. He was like, that was his intention. That's why he killed him at the power. I was like, yeah, I guess yeah, that's, I suppose that's so. It was. He's got a pretty fundamental and understanding and of a good, infrastructure. And a good for... excuse to get like one extra, like kill it, I guess. For sure. Um, well, we had a great scene. I feel like kind of robbed from us in this, in the, the police station massacre that we do not even <laughs> see at all. <laughs> go, like yeah. why, why are we not seeing this? Like there's a couple scenes that definitely did not need to be in there, but if we're going to see Michael do anything, it's take out a whole precinct police of police officers, like the reverse on. of assault on precinct 13 yeah. Yeah, One yeah, versus yeah. like 300. <laughs> well, what I, what I want to ask you, Jackson, as a counter, cause like Halloween, the original is known for not showing much of anything right so like is it necessary for the subsequent sequels to show more or is it like you know at this point you're like it's you know it's 88 we don't need to like shy away from what we're seeing no that's very much how i feel i feel like we don't i mean john carpenter was able to construct and do what he did with halloween um i i think it very much works in the movie's favor that we are not seeing a lot and that is part to the brilliance of his direction but he also was working with you know a micro budget and that i think is a big if if he had more money to play with i'm sure he would have maybe you know framed some scenes differently maybe shown more splurge a little bit um but as the movies and the franchise grows i think there's more opportunity to show these things so i feel if i were to guess and i don't exactly know but i would guess it has something to do with ratings and scenes being cut in the editing process and i think that it would have been cool to see michael a little bit more menacing with because what was the budget of, of Halloween four? Five million dollars. Okay, so still not insane, but like it's not insane, many yeah. times more than the original budget of Halloween, the first one. So yeah, I would have liked to seen it, but I guess I mean we are third appearance of Michael Myers, <laughs> and we can see what he what he does. But he, like Dude, I'm just imagining your like one. frustration when they get to yeah. that like. So they get to that, like, you're like, what? We didn't see that? Because we get that. I already <laughs> felt that way with the ambulance scene. And we're seeing Loomis <laughs> get to the aftermath. I'm like, okay, that's, if that's where it's going to happen, fine, whatever. We, the picture's already painted of what Michael's capable of. But then I feel like it would have been a great build up to him. At least see him approach and go into the station. And then yeah. the left, the rest of it can be left to our imagination. But we don't even get anything about it. And then we just roll up and see the station had been wiped out and we see some dead officers on the ground. It's like, oh, okay, that would have been nice to at least have known that was happening sometime in the, yeah. in the movie. Do it once. Um, you know, fool me once. Shame on me. Yeah. Fool me twice, shame <laughs> on you. you. Exactly. If they had done it a third um, time, I think I actually would have hated that in this movie. That's usually my, my rule with horror movies. If you're going to do a trope, you only get two shots. If you do it a third time, I'm yeah, I, you're already, there's I'm overdoing it. On you. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you what your what are your thoughts because I uh, they 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 aren't quite the uh, evil di- dies tonight townspeople of Halloween Kills. But what did you think of like oh. the the Haddonfield locals? <laughs> Jeff, and, uh, I think I can tell you feel Halloween what I feel about that. <laughs> well, I love Kills. I hate that part. I hate that part yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. like Kills when I saw it. I, I've kind of sympathized a little bit with it more on reflection. I haven't seen it second time yet, but I'll be seeing it soon. But I'm with you, Jeff. Like I was actually thinking, just to answer your question, Gaius, the townsfolk, I, I definitely see where Kills was inspired by this movie. And <laughs> I think it was just it was done much more appropriately and not over the top in this movie, like with the townsfolk sort of yeah. uniting and, and coming together and sort of like doing something to take a stand against Michael. It was done, I think, in just the right amount. Um, but I found myself cringing when I was thinking back to evil dies tonight and how many times it was chanted and kills like, God, <laughs> I'm really not looking forward to that rewatch for that alone, but, um, there will be moments in it that I'm excited to see again. And when, when I do get to kills, cause I, I'll have, uh, you guys made me want to s- sneak in the, the watch of Halloween five and I have it. I can I'll drop do it. Oh, you have it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I have I the like, DVD, okay, but like, I still okay. got, it's still I, fun to watch. Yeah. I still got Halloween 2018 kills and ends to get through and we are as of recording what were we october 24 so that'll probably be my week of watches will be all halloween movies but maybe i'll yeah. throw in five too i'm not i'm not sure I, it always feels like a necessity after i watch this one even though i don't love it yeah because mm-hmm. it is a, it completes the well mostly it completes it not, not in the way that i would hope but it's still and like i said there's like i mean there's a few set pieces i want to bring up for this movie but halloween five had some really good tense moments in it yes. uh mm-hmm. towards the end that are really really good um 
Albeit, if you know the behind the scenes stories behind some of them, they're like really dangerous, especially with poor <laughs> <Yeah>. Daniel Harris. <laughs> poor Daniel oh. Harris being way too young to do any of her own stunts. Uh, but, but yeah, but she was down. <laughs> she was down. Yeah, she was down, and her parents were probably like, "Yeah, whatever, she can do it." Um, but yeah, Jeff, what did you think about the townspeople in this, like that angle of it? Of part four um i actually liked it in this movie it didn't bother me but like jackson it just reminded me of kills i'm sitting here watching the movie going please don't say evil dies tonight please don't start stupid if thing. i never hear and that again didn't. it'll be too soon i mean at least they all served a purpose the police force was killed all that was left was the town people on yeah. a rage there you and go. they actually went i guess that... for the guy to kill him instead of yeah. i'm gonna go down the street and pick it Except like they accidentally pieces. killed they accidentally killed an innocent, right? Like Ted yeah. Hoster or who they ever yes. they're like right. gunned down. It. What are we doing now? <laughs> and why is and that guy hiding in the bushes in the first place? And then when confronted with anything. going after Michael again, they're like, yo, girls get in the truck, we're out of here. We ain't dealing with this. Right. Yeah, yeah. And there is, a, I guess, that whole thing going on in the town where everyone's dressing up like him, right? Because you have that one scene where they think they yeah. see him, and then like there's yeah, multiple cool. people dressed up like him. I thought that was actually yeah. pretty cool too, even though the, the masks mm -hmm. all look horrible. They're just most horrible. Awful. <laughs> that was like a blonde orange looking one. I'm like, wow, yeah. that's well, I noticed that and I'm like, at the point I didn't remember that scene. So I was like, is that supposed to be Michael? Because his hair is all sorts of whack right now. So I yeah, I ended up uh, not are being like, are you okay. about this? Yeah, there there's a scene later in the school where he throws Loomis through the window and right. Michael Myers does have blonde hair briefly. And they said they think the error stemmed from a tire crew member rushing to the prop area before grabbing one of the incorrect masks. And they said that nobody on set caught the error, and they just acknowledged that it was a mistake. It made it on film. Okay. You know, just, <laughs> like, but it's there for sure. I, I will say I do think that like showing anybody else in a Myers mask or the, the, the acknowledgement that there's more than the one. And I get it. It's a mask. It was, he stole it from a Halloween shop. You can, it's implied that it would have been mass Maybe produced at ones. least, but I do feel like it cheapens the effect of his mask. It just feels like he should be the only one we see in it. And that it's very much his, even though it's not, it's not customized by any means, but I, as cool as that scene was, and it was different, it, like in seeing yeah. other ones and thinking, but we obviously know there's only one Michael Myers. So for that moment, it's like, I don't know what it necessarily was trying to convey, but it did a little bit cheapen it, the the use of his mask for me. But I thought it was interesting in in a new sort of experimental scene within the franchise. So it was it did its job, I guess. And yeah, I'm because it it's interesting. To, it's it's welcome. interesting too, because like by this point, it's been ten years since. Because like even though there's two movies, the, the first two take place on one night, right? So right like, yeah. by this by this point, ten years later, like everyone knows about that night and uh, right. They and you know a lot of young kids probably would want to dress up like it as even though it it's this yeah. awful kind of town history that is you know exists there but like yeah right. it's interesting to think how like at, by this point you know it'd be kind of almost like this kind of folklore almost because he's been gone for so long and, like, yeah and yeah yeah I think yeah you do get a couple characters like is it Brady this that literally doesn't know who Michael Myers was in one scene he goes oh yeah are? like when Rachel Rachel is like, like is she and the way she says it she was like Mike she's like what <laughs> right and then and then I think at one point she says like he's Jamie's uncle and I think Jamie says like the kids at school are right so like they've been like yes. teasing her like this whole time about uh there's another a scene to feel sorry for. She's like, "Fuck, mm -hmm. my life is fucked up. <laughs> it's yeah. like awful." And then She's I wonder if the Ra Snow White lunchbox. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and I know Rachel too, because like at this point, she's probably like, oh, "I gotta be all in." Like this, we did not expect to. Well, I guess they did. Like becoming her foster parents and all that, they would have mm -hmm. to know like who she was related to yeah. and like what that meant. Yeah, you know, assuming they probably, you know, he probably assumed he was dead, uh, and it wouldn't matter anymore, but. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just that someone that I'm I'm assuming Brady just moved there. <laughs> That's the only reason. He yeah, would not fair be enough. Able That's a good that. point. Yeah, <laughs> never met his family of any sort. Yeah. It's like yeah, at all. True. Yeah, I'm like okay. Um, so I know neither <laughs> yeah. of you. Correct me if I'm wrong. But neither of you saw this in theaters, correct? No, I was no, I I was four. You were four, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but so I know that this. I mean, even after all these years, it obviously has more of a cult following, but uh, its reception still is mostly negative. But 
I, I'm just curious for both of your first time watches or maybe your first few watches of this movie, was that ever the case for you guys? Did it, is this a movie that grew on you after you'd seen it more and came to love the franchise or was it right away like a, 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 fit, a go-to for you? Did either of you guys have any problems with it on initial watch? I'll go, yeah, Jeff, you can go first. Okay. Yeah. I didn't have a problem with it the first time I watched it. I'm like, this is really good. This is certainly better than part six. And mm. then I, <laughs> Oh yeah. You watch six first. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I would then go watch them all over again. And every time I rewatch them, I can get through the first six. No problem. And okay. my favorite, you know, part four is easily one of my favorites. It's really good all around. And so every time I watch it, I, I start picking out other little things and backgrounds and other scenes. But <laughs> when I was watching it to, to join you guys on this, I just sat back and enjoyed it. I only wrote down like a handful of notes and just was like, that's usually this my is approach one of my comfort for... movies for yeah. Halloween. Nice. I love it. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback. On, it is a comfort movie for me. So I, of all the sequels, I watched this one the most growing up. Okay. Uh, more than Halloween, more than Halloween two, uh, definitely five and six. So four you was still always have your like VHSs. I don't, unfortunately. No. Um, we're gonna have to blame the parentals on throwing them out. Yeah, <laughs> a, uh, long time, a long time, a long time, a long time. Yeah, yeah. I have a couple. Worth, worth, nice. Worth, I knew my they, parents' place. Thinking, yeah, thinking they weren't worth any value, I just threw them away, and I was like, thanks. That hurts. But like once I, <laughs> when I was in, um. I think when I was in high school and I started getting DVDs, it was like, oh, we don't need these anymore. And then they just gradually got rid of them. And now I wish I still had them because they're, they're right. great. But I had all these on VHS growing up and I watched this one the most growing up. Okay. I think even though I, the first one was always my favorite, but this was always the most entertaining one, I think, as far as like the sequels uh, were concerned. Right. And um, I've always loved it. I think it's I. Oh, yeah. You know, well, I was looking on the day of its anniversary. A lot of people were saying it's their second favorite or third favorite. Yeah, I've seen that out of, out, a lot out, 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 out of all of them. It's like, it's definitely, I think, the fan favorite. Yeah. Um, I think that's the reason why Danielle Harris is like a lot of people want her to come back in some capacity. I know she does. And she's wonderful. Too. She's great. She's, totally she's a, yeah. She wants to do it. She loves the franchise. You know, she had a few bad instances in the franchise back in the day like she had a stalker like a long yeah. time ago and, and, and oh it made her God. leery made her leery of going to conventions and all that stuff but yeah. she's since gotten around that she goes to conventions a lot um she loves to even though she knows halloween five isn't, isn't as good as four but like you know she had a good time making that you know by the time she does like five like she really is the star of that movie like she's in a you know she's in the bulk of that movie and I don't know. It's always, always, always fun. I mean, like the, I always get a kick at that. Like once we get to, once he, once Rachel finds like Kelly and the other like deputy, and she, like, you realize that like, shit's gone down in the house, and like mm -hmm. the house be becomes its one giant set piece where they're just locked inside. They've done all right. this work really to like lock that. themselves in, yeah. and they've locked themselves in with him. That like that gives me like that's so dope. Every time I watch it, it's like so cool that they've done all this work. Like we got to keep him out. And he's already inside, and they've basically like locked themselves in with him. Yeah, um, it's just really cool. Great and I love the whole, and I love the rooftop stuff too. I think that whole sequence on the rooftop is like super good. Uh, I know Ellie Cornell got hurt pretty bad while doing that scene. She got like caught on a nail and like cut like down her uh, chest. Oh, and went to yeah. the emergency and got patched, got patched up, and then went back to work and did it all over again. Um, wow! They of course great. they of course weren't weren't on like a real like high roof, but they did a lot of the stuff themselves. Like she had Daniel Harris on her back, and they were doing a lot of the. I mean, it was the eighties. We always talk about how like older movies were, especially with lower budgets. It seemed like they just let yeah. people do whatever they like. You right. wouldn't normally put those whatever kind of whatever it takes kind of to situation. get it done. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I think that I that sequence on the roof uh, actually I think is one of the best like set pieces of the whole franchise. Dude, it's like so much. Fun yeah. and actually the movie the movie moves right after that like you know once she like she has a whole sequence at the school where he falls her there and then the stuff on the truck where you think they've escaped and I don't really need any explanation as to how he got on the truck or if he nope. was underneath the entire time it doesn't need to make sense <laughs> Michael can do anything can but you get a lot of you get a, you get some Jackson you get some kills in that uh, like all yeah. the, like. And then and then homeboy gets like his face ripped. Uh, yeah, we gotta get he gets a good like neck, neck grab. grab. Like I could have used a little bit more, but that was a highlight. 
Um, <laughs> it did. Like I was trying not to like think too deeply about how deaf those people are on the back of the truck as he's like yeah. climbing up. Oh, as he's one. climbing. Yeah, and, like, and no one's the, turned around. Oblivious. Yeah, yep, no one. No, <laughs> nothing. That third guy took way too long to notice. Hey, where are my two <laughs> yes. buddies that were literally right next to me? <laughs> By the way, this is the fastest you see Michael move. Uh, like once he's killing them on the truck, it seems like every swipe is just like super quick. Like okay. there's no like he, there's like no slow movement on the truck at all. He must have saw uh, the runtime on a ticker and was like, "Crap, I got to kill everybody." Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, he moves also, pretty quick after getting hit by the truck. I'll tell you that he flies. Yeah, he does yeah. fly. <laughs> uh, you know, another good example, like from the rooftop to the stuff in the car. Rachel, uh, kind of like take go comes to the forefront and like yeah, definitely. You know, she's not like a shrieking violet. She does what she needs to do to like protect her sister, and uh, it, which is a shame. What happens in the next hmm. one? But uh, <laughs> uh, but like she is like. Like, I think I said earlier, like the unsung hero of that movie. Like she, I agree. Like the fact that you know she falls from that uh, from the roof, and then like when she comes into the school and just has like the extinguisher and just like like blows him with it, like she's gone all, all that way to help her sister. Like I think it's pretty cool. Like I think the character is actually really probably one of the better uh, of those movies. Like Final Girls, completely agree. I really liked her presence. Her the character was was quite good. Again, like I said, just a great stand in. If we're not going to have Lori, then Rachel is a great, great addition. Yeah. And I, <laughs> but it is crazy how like uh, chaotic it is while he's on top of the car and like her <laughs> truck and he's just trying to reach in and grab her. She keeps and, ducking. Like, she's ducking and ripping her shirt. And she's just like, and then I guess he gets gets so frustrated that he just slams his face on the like windshield to like scare <laughs> yeah. her. I guess yeah. <laughs> freak her out. Yeah, I yeah. love. I'm begging her the entire scene to slam on the brakes, um, not even knowing what would happen if he's impervious to the laws of physics or not. But no, he <laughs> goes flying fly finally, and then she has the big brain idea to throw it in reverse and then floor right it and hit him. Like this is what yeah. you want a competent horror movie uh, protagonist to do. Uh, she just, I just agreed with every decision she was making. Very competent, even like getting her and um, Jamie out of the house through the attic window. Just good thinking all around. Yeah, because yeah. there's no uh, no other way out at that point, right? That's they right. Just have yeah. to keep going. Yeah. She's just always thinking on her feet <laughs> and not no make not making any dumb decisions. Yeah, it she transitioned refreshing. very well from the flight or flight to, from flight to flight. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because like when she once she realizes stuff's going on, like her reaction, I mean she's freaked out, but like the first thing she does is like run upstairs to find Jamie. Like she needs to find yeah. Jamie. And then when Brady's like, we gotta go, and she's like, No, I gotta find Jamie. And, he, and then she's like, Do you think she stands a chance? Like after he points to the deputy that's down on the floor, like he's running <laughs> to just like bolt. <laughs> and she's like, No, I'm not gonna leave her. So I think that's she stands out. Like her and uh Jamie, I think are a good team throughout the movie. Uh, at, by the end of it uh what did you think uh, uh jackson when you saw like jamie getting out of the car to go like i don't know see your uncle con console her uncle <laughs> I, <laughs> whatever she was doing i mean like part of me is like no like what are we doing here but i think like the outcome of that scene i don't know is it implied that when they touch that like the evil is i think that's what is implied I, there overall like i like that as a narrative point like i thought that was a really cool uh moment for them um i was just expecting him to like because you see his hand grasp the knife again yeah expecting that'd be the moment where i and i knew that jamie wasn't gonna die but i'm like almost like expecting that's what's gonna happen when it does but i think it took the story in a more interesting direction um feels like something like some unnatural force was compelling her to go over to him and like he kind of knew his time was up and yeah. it, to continue existing or the evilness inside him uh it had to be transferred to her so i thought that was a really cool and original and a bold step for that series to to take and i'm glad they did um because uh by the time that last scene happens and just to have that sort of that original sin if you will of michael killing a sister like replicated and and jamie doing it to her adoptive mother this time around yeah. and there's Loomis to be there and actually witness it this time. Uh, it was a huge, yeah. Horrified and selling that performance uh, very much paid off for me um, where I think like in maybe a different approach or a different director or a different writer who wrote that, that may not have 
been as compelling, but the team behind it who crafted that scene and that story plot or that plot of the story, I guess, uh, executed it really well. And I was very satisfied by the ending. Like, like I said, I like my dismal endings. So that was yeah. very, very satisfying. Um, and it's, I guess I never considered while watching that this is another Halloween movie where Michael kind of meets his maker by the end. Like he actually does like Michael Myers. Yeah. Like imagine and dies. It has a bit of they, an ending. Yeah. And they unleash hell on him. It's not just like, <laughs> Oh, we're going to like fire. Like Dr. Loomis, I shot him six times. Like this is like just a barrage. <laughs> yes. It reminded me of the scene of the Predator when they're like firing into the jungle. Yeah. yeah. You know what you know, you know what that reminded me of while every time I watch it and I don't even know what their intentions were when they made four if the intention was like hey we can make another one if it's successful. There seemed like there was like a lot of finality to what they were writing. Yeah, like it seemed like hey like you know the way they did the how they killed him in this seemed like this would be it if if it was going to be it. And you know having that kind of like hook of a twist ending I mean I guess we couldn't realistically like what they would expect would happen next, you know, in another movie. Like, I feel like they just kind of wrote one standalone and then that was it. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but like, it seemed like there was like a, not a lot of intention of like, let's keep making these when they went into making this one. Yeah. If you look at it, it almost feels like a nice, neat little trilogy from one, two and four. That's how I look at it. Yeah. And it Friends, and then you could go somewhere else with um, Danielle Harris, J.B. Lloyd going forward, and it continues the franchise, and you're telling a new, unique story. Like, mm -hmm. Sleepaway Camp has shown, like, you can do some weird, funky stuff and continue on. It doesn't hurt nothing. It's right. okay. You've done it with Jason. You've done it with Freddy. You could have done something really fresh and unique with Jamie going forward. What I they think... do with Jamie going forward is a little different um based on what they yeah. set up in this movie but like to your point this is a good ending right here i was talking to my co-host kevin the other night before we recorded our other insidious review and he we were saying the same thing like four wraps up very nice and neat Absolutely and then you could have done does. something new from that while continuing yeah. it at the same time i i completely agree with everything you just said jeff uh, and nothing really after four was really worthwhile it doesn't seem like didn't really add anything significant to the series i know that's obviously you know there's fans out there five six and uh h2o and whatnot but i think like four was a nice little bow but at yeah. the end of the day i think michael myers his caricature he's just too much of a money maker too too good to give up and not bring back i suppose like from the studio standpoint but all my merch would tell you you are correct yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> So I'm not surprised it went that way. It is a shame, though, because it would have been yeah. a really nice trilogy, obviously not considering three. So it's... I think the I think the ending is more brave than anything, too. I mean, Definitely. I don't think it a lot works. of I don't think a lot of people would have done that. Like the fact that they were willing to do that, yeah. uh, uh, you know, especially depicting like, I mean, I know like, just the image of her at the top of the stairs, like, you know, and, and like you said, you like bleak endings like you watch her go through this whole ordeal, right? Yes. You know, trying to get away from this guy. And now she's become him essentially. Right. Uh, basically, like kind of recreating like how he was at the beginning of you know yeah. the first movie. And uh, I know it's a super brave way to go. I think it's, it's very nice like call. Shakespearean it's nice, to me. Which it's I a, really yeah, it's love. a nice callback <laughs> to the original. Um, yes. And I think that like given what they were trying to do with like, hey, we, I won't say screwed up with three because I actually think three is good on its own as its own individual movie. Mm -hmm. Just take um, Halloween three off the first part. Just call it Season of the Witch. That's fine. Yeah, Season of the Witch. Yeah, there perfect, you go. Right? I, and right. I really want to watch it, and that's how I'm going to approach it when I do watch it, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. So I think, like, given what they had, where they're like, "Hey, let's try to bring this back." I think they did the best they could, and and this is the best result. Yeah. I mean, as good as it could have gone, uh, given yeah. you know what they were coming off of, and I think probably helps that like Halloween two isn't like it's not perfect, so it's not you're not really coming off of something that that's. Grant, like it's crazy. I mean, I have, I know people that think Halloween two is better than four. I think four is better than yep. two. Um, there's aspect. I mean, I love the look of two, and yeah. I think that you yeah. know, I love and I love I actually love the way Michael Myers looks in two because he basically mm -hmm. get, gives off the vibe that he gives gives off in the first one. I think Dick I Warlock is a good yet. Michael Myers too. But yeah, like, me too. Yeah. Um, but I what a name. <laughs> I think 
I think I know, right? I think that four has a better, uh, and this might not be fair, because like Halloween two is just continuing off that original night or from the first movie. Right. Four has the four has the benefit of having its own kind of standalone story, where two is just feels like it's it's just a continuation. And, that and then you have the whole like added stack them against each other, yeah. right? And then it has all added element of making you know. May I, which I guess they carry on with part four, you know, like she, she he's Lori's brother, and um, yeah, for better or worse. I mean, some I, people like that, some I people didn't don't. love how that was introduced. Oh, how they just dropped, how it they was just dropped. very <laughs> dropped late, shoehorned, one might say. I think it's because to me, like, honestly, I just never really considered before until like honestly joining the podcast that that wasn't common knowledge i had just always known that growing up but i i yeah, yeah. never really took the time to consider that this is not a plot point from the first movie um but so but actually seeing it for the first time and how that twist is delivered i was like Ooh, okay yeah not done very it is carefully. delivered like late in the game too yeah. like it's like the movie's the movie's almost over yeah you have like 15 and minutes there's left, a and secret like, oh. file that the doctor of michael myers for a decade <laughs> plus had just didn't know about and uh, the government <laughs> unsealed it and I just thought it was very lazily done. But, it almost felt yeah. like a TV edit scene that should have just been for the TV. Not yeah, the there you go. Like, yo, c- cut this out and keep it kind of like its own little cut. Yeah. yeah and you're, and you you're can fine. tell in two, they have like those little like she's asleep. And there's clearly these like dream yeah. sequences of like her going to see him at mm-hmm. some point and her maybe not remembering this. That yeah. I mean, they try to allude to it, but it's very kind of sloppy. And you can tell that. John Carpenter thinks it's sloppy too. He was just like, I, I needed a. We he didn't a give a twist. shit. I don't think <laughs> he didn't even. No, want he said he said it's that like he, he, he got trouble. A little China sequel instead. Yeah, basically, know? he said he he got through a case of beer trying to figure out how to write Halloween two. Yeah, and that's what and that is what he came up with. Did he not and make Halloween or write Halloween two? He uh, wrote. He wrote Halloween. Fog. Yeah, he no, he did. Oh, but yeah, did he, he not do it, it to it, get the fog financed. It, there's think, like there's like incentive. Like, well, no, that was before. No, actually, no, it might have been incentive to do other stuff. Because the fog came okay. out before Halloween too. It did, but like I but thought, like, like right. that was conditional. Like the fog would be financed if he would be involved in the next Halloween. Oh, if he wanted so to do it, Halloween, that, I no, think that there's could a be, story that could there. Be it too. Right. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. I'm not sure. Like a lot that. of the stuff that happens with Halloween after part one for him is all financial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely. like all for money. Yeah. And then, like he, I mean, he'd been so good about being with the franchise again until the David Gordon Green stuff. <laughs> Which uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he did like his executive producing was good. You, like he, I think you he know was, what though, and he did the like squad. Oh. Yeah, there you go. I, I mentioned this earlier though. Considering what they introduced in part four with the whole like transfer of evil thing, why is that such a big deal for people with Halloween ends? Like I have friends that love Halloween four, hate Halloween ends, and that is what they kind of hit at with Halloween four. That like, hey, this is like something that can be passed on. Right, and maybe they how really, it's and delivered, they, how it's done, who it's done to. I have obviously can't comment. I haven't seen it yet. I really hope it's not transferred to who I think it's going to be to. <laughs> oh, well, this is it's ends. You, you think I'm going to throw chairs at right, Gaius? Yeah, you're going to throw yeah. chairs probably. Oh, my life. <laughs> there was a way to look at parts, uh, kills and ends. The, it was originally supposed to just be 2018. Then they were yeah. like, "Hey, this is too much money. We got to do just one more, one more movie." Then got Mm. stopped partway in production by the pandemic. Right. And then they then had to split the scripts. So you could take out parts of kills and like the first two thirds of ends. And if you put those two together in a fan edit, (laughs) that is one movie. movie. Because I hope that 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 is done someday. With that idiot. And that's what killed it for me. (laughs) Yeah. It's not the transfer of the evil to him. That is not the problem with that. It's he came out of freaking nowhere. Yeah, exactly. So, I think the big problem with that character is that he's not introducing kills. I think if they would have introduced exactly would have wearing kills. Way, yeah, yeah. I watched kills the other night. I loved it. I can't get over how much <laughs> the I love it. So, I mean, twenty I, minutes are so good. Yeah, and I like absolutely. And I, I like Michael and I like. Off. I forgot how hard he kills Dylan in the house. I like. Yeah. I like the her uh, Alice's boyfriend. I oh, completely yeah. forgot. Like. Not, he wrecks him and then he's like walking by him again and just gives him it's one like, final like I'm not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yes. I liked all that stuff towards the end and I liked all the townspeople like attacking him and stuff that was fun like yeah it, it has good ideas in it good yeah. ideas just poor you know you take out the you take spots. out the evil dies tonight stuff and then you oh, got a pretty God. solid movie 
I get the idea though. Like, I mean, they're trying to say that they, you know, oh, there's a whole mob and the town's angry and like, yeah. Blah. Mm-hmm. Now, does it, it is interesting that the town like it's so weird to think of this timeline where mm-hmm. by Halloween four he killed sixteen people between Halloween one and Halloween two, but that's mm-hmm. only if you count that timeline and like the David Gordon Green timeline. It's only one night from the original where he only killed how many people? It's like very small amount, like right. four. Right, and then that, and that one night, like, has made the town like so freaked out <laughs> and like crazy. And then he kills like twenty more. Yeah. Everybody. I need a death count. I need. I'm gonna be counting when I watch kills again. Yeah, I have a friend. That, like, I have yes. a friend that doesn't like the whole like he thinks disregarding uh, Halloween two, in particular for the David Gordon Green trilogy, like, kind of cheapens it a bit because like, I... hey, he killed. He killed less people in Halloween 4. Like, why does it matter? Why is the town still, like, up in arms about something that happened that long ago? It wasn't that right. many people. Right. Like, you know. I agree. I think, too, I might have a different take. You have to, like, you watch. have to keep the brother. You have to keep the brother angle, though, which they didn't want to keep. But, like. Right. Oh, right. True. But I, yeah, I'll be yeah. interested to see. I Because in with my recollection of David Gordon Green's first two movies, I think two would really work at being included in there but i'll have to i'll pick up probably on some subtle nuances when i get these watches in this week but i thought two worked fantastically as a counterpart to one and all taking place in the same night but that being said i do love the 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 first like the 78 sequences in kills are done really well too and they're so good they do their job of retconning and so whatever yeah oh i do want to ask you before we wrap up um Alan Howarth, who did the score for Halloween four, um, and he also did Halloween. He did he worked with John Carpenter on the Halloween two score, which is has a lot okay. more synthesizers because it's like yes eighties. I what did you think of uh, the music for four? And I asked you about two as well because it is a little different from Halloween one as far as like the it's yeah. definitely more synthesizers. It, less you piano. can tell it's got the same bones, but definitely more simple. I didn't really know what it. I couldn't pinpoint exactly what was different about it, but you're right. It's absolutely a synthesizer. I, I thought it was nice little touch up. I don't really think the music had to be that much different. Like I think they could have just, yeah. maybe it's a rights thing. I don't know how that would have worked, but why they couldn't have just used Carpenter's original score would have probably fade, made that movie feel even more closer to the first one. Um, but I liked the music a lot too and for its differences for, um, I guess I, the music obviously was fine, but it didn't, uh, do any, do anything different for me i just felt like, okay this is a halloween movie and this is what the music sounds like it didn't feel as poignant as carpenter's original score but it still felt fine but twos was i thought a nice little twist on it yeah four yeah. you really don't get you get the theme like two or three times i think yeah you know, a lot. Well, honestly, nearly two times like yeah and then like there it seemed like there's variations like the the scene where he's walking up the, up the stairs to like go after Brady, like you yeah. feel like you hear variations of like the right the shape stalk Lori theme a little bit, but of course you can't use the shape stalk Lori thing because he's not stalking Lori. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly. uh, but but you don't really hear a lot of the signature like music, other music from the movies in it, which but I think they it's used sparingly enough where it's like, oh, it's still Halloween. Yeah. And it works. You guys have any uh Oh, actually, you know, I'll go to the scores. So, Jeff, you can give a score on the movie. If you want to do one through ten, you can do stars or grade, however, you, grade, however you want to grade it. Um, what do you give ha- Halloween for um, as grade? I give it an eight and a half out of ten. Boom. Nice. Right, I Jack, just wish it had a little more gore and a little flash of nudity in this to make it feel like a <laughs> movie. A little I, bit more Friday the 13th. Yeah, just Halloween. a little. You know, that's one thing that I've never felt was missing in the Halloween series. Uh, There's virtually none in the first. I guess two does show a little bit more. And again, like being an 80s movie, I think it's sort of like uh, just hearkening on those sensibilities of that particular decade. Yeah, that time. Um, Yeah. But uh, I've always been. I guess no, I'm wrong. There's there's actually some in in number one. What am I talking about? I was going to say PJ. Yes, PJ PJ Souls. But it's but it's not like I mean gratuitous. Right. No, it's just a little flash. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, there you go. Yeah, There's something for the people. Um, so I mean, I went right from the watch to here. I never, I haven't bothered rating this yet on Letterbox or anything. Um, and again, this is gonna be one of those ones that's like probably lower than it might than seem like it wasn't an enjoyment, <laughs> but it was very much so. But I'd say I'd give this six stabs out of ten, probably on, on the good side. Um, 
That's fair. Yeah, I still haven't really compared. I got to compare it up to two in my head and just make up a final decision. But like, maybe I'd give it six and a half, just go up a little bit more because I, I, I like used, it more I, than that. I used to give this like an eight back in the day, and I don't yeah. even know if, if that's even fair. To, <laughs> if it's like, if I'm embarrassing like the cinephile of me by giving it an eight. No, there's um, no such thing. It's whatever you think of it. Um, yeah. You know, at enjoyment level, I give it an eight. But as a film, I probably give it a seven. And that's the thing. I never know what way I'm judging a movie, how I'm thinking about it. Is it, did I enjoy it? I probably enjoyed it a little bit more than a six and a half, but that's kind of like just the number I'm settled on in my head. But I totally think any of your guys' scores are right. It's how you think of it, right? Yeah. It's yeah, I mean, it's all open to interpretation. And, exactly. Uh, how you kind of, your enjoyment level of it. I mean, this is, like I said, this is the one I grew up with, uh, other than the first one, the most. And, right. Um, and it's still like, like the one I like, if I can't watch them all in a row, I will like, I'll do like Halloween one, two, and four. And then I can right. in my Halloween like marathon. Yes. Happily and with that. That's my big takeaway from today is like, I plan a hundred percent on doing a little bit of a, like continue, like going forward on around Halloween, adding two and four into my yearly or biannual yeah. watches. Whereas like, I, yeah. I don't think I'd say the same about H2O. Like I don't really have any like desire to go back to that one yet. Uh, or yeah. Even, I- Five I'm glad you enjoyed this one more than that because I was like, yeah. "Oh, please enjoy four. I yeah, so I listened I, to that one earlier, and I'm like, well, "I like these guys." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was uh, like, "I'll accept, I'll accept you not liking H2O, but if you're like four sucks, I'm like, well, we're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna disagree." <laughs> so there you go, exactly. Which would have been fun conversation, but no. Then yeah. overall, I enjoyed it. I'm happy I got it in. I wish it didn't take so long before I'd really watch it start to finish, but here we are. Uh, definitely plan on watching it in the future, making it a staple in my Halloween viewings. There's a different, two different timelines that I will probably approach, like in terms of like future watches. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And I'd like to try that drinking game out sometime that Mark showed us. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a drinking game? Yeah, like he showed us, it it has to do with like the timelines and stuff. Like you mean waste it by the end of it. Okay. I need to it's get really a copy of that again because I forget exactly how it works, but I remember when he showed us that I'm like, that would be a lot of fun to try some year. Yeah, it'd be really yeah. fun. You would be totally wasted though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a lot, it was it was a lot for sure. Yeah. Um, Jeff, I know we kind of um you explained the podcast and stuff earlier, yeah. but we kind of had you rush through it. But if there's uh, a little bit more detail you want to give before we uh sign off, uh I'm gonna give you some time to do that. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me on. I co-host a podcast with my buddy, Kevin. We talk, you know, sci-fi horror canceled TV shows. We've done some goofy ones from like Jack of all trades to Ash versus evil dead to Mm. Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles and all the things in between. There's plenty to choose from. So if you got a favorite show that got jacked or axed on you, we're the guys that like to talk about it. And we talked about some cult classic films on our YouTube channel call it zero point reviews we just do fun movies and just have a good old time and come check us out we're at sonsandshadows.com we're on youtube at sons and shadows cast i'd love to have you with us and we're also on all podcatchers or pod apps whatever terminology you like to use and love to have you aboard thanks for having me on again yeah absolutely Jeff. thanks a lot for, for yeah for us sure today. this is a good conversation for halloween four. Oh yeah yeah, and you're and, now a friend uh, of the show, so which is really yeah. uh, good. Like, like that's the best part. And also, you are um, because we're doing, you know, surprise, surprise. Halloween is going to be our last movie for our Tales of Horror, the original Halloween. Mm-hmm. And I we're going to do and we're, and, that one. That's my and, ten out of ten. Uh, yeah, and we're definitely. doing we're doing that one just Jackson and I. So you are our last. Uh, you and David are our last uh, guest of our Tales of Horror series. So there's that as well. Cool. Yes, uh, so we've, we've had like a Badge lot of, of honor. good people. A lot of good people come on the last two months, so it's been a lot of fun. It's almost sad Man, that it's almost over. Flew by, but we definitely plan on having some other sort of mini series like this going forward. Oh, yeah. So stay tuned. Even to the, you guys listening, we will uh, give you guys lots of advance notice for what we plan on covering, and definitely plan on having more guests and podcasts feature with us going forward. So keep an ear open, and yeah, like, just thanks. Uh, thanks again, Jeff, for joining us on. On this episode, it was a blast. Good to have you. And um, yeah, I think without further ado, unless there's any other closing remarks. No, there you go, Jackson. Right on. That wraps up episode 128 of Back to the Blockbuster. Thank you guys for listening and joining us while we covered Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. It's been a blast. Jeff and David, thank you very much for joining us. 
Um, for those of you that may be new here, you guys can find us anywhere uh, on social media or wherever you guys get your podcasts at Back to the Blockbuster. The handle is the same on all of them. And uh, more recently, the Playlist app, which is now available on the iOS store and the Google Play store. for So for whatever sort of phone you have, you can download it on your respective uh, app store and listen to us on the Playlist app. So thanks again. This has been episode 128. And until next time, guys, take care and look forward to our last episode in our Tales of Horror series coming next week where we will cover Halloween.